Hey all you minties, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and today join me as I take an advanced look at the Wolverine Omnibus from Marvel Comics, and do a comparison to the original printing. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back, minties. Now, before I get started, I'd like to thank David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. The Omnibus is due out on March 25th in the direct market. That's comic book stores, cheapgraphicnovels.com, in stock trades, Tales of Wonder, and places like that. And then a few weeks later at places like Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Now, before we look inside of the book, I want to do a quick comparison to the original printing here. Uh, this is the one that I've gotten from the bar the, what was it, the Amazon glitch from 2010, the Grand Amazon glitch from 2010. So this is the new printing. As you can probably tell, the price has gone up one penny. And one more thing before we look at the spot in the back, that there is going to be a direct market version of the book, just like there was in the original printing, and it's the Frank Miller issue one cover which this is a nice homage to here are the spines you have the original printing and the new printing new printing of course being thinner because of the binding and the paper which we'll look at here in a little bit original printing new printing different ISBN the Marvel logos down here and actually the font that they use is a little bit different too so the new printing has the direct market cover on it or the cover to issue one. And, oh, that's cool. And then the variant cover in the back. I think that's the first time I've seen that. Now, of course, the original one has this fake leather look to it with the silver Wolverine logo, looking like a nice old school library book. Now, before we take a look inside here, I did want to mention that the story, some of the stories are collected in the Wolverine Epic Collections too. So some of the stuff that's in here can be found in here. But let's look inside of that bad boy. If you've been watching the channel, there's no secret that Wolverine is my favorite character. And you all know how excited I was when I got to announce that they were reprinting it. Not only that, but I also did a retro view. Um, I'm really pushing this book. I like that the font's a lot bigger. Most of the time, the people that put the books together, um, their credits are kind of small and somewhere at the bottom, so this is really nice. So you see a lot of familiar names here like Mark Beasley, Caitlin O'Connell, Katery Woody, uh, Jennifer Grunewald, Jeff Youngquist, and just to name a few. But yes, I am really pushing this book. Here's the table of contents, what all is collected in here, and we'll talk about that. An introduction to Weapon X from the original trade paperback that came out in 1992 from Larry Hama. Also collected in um, standard hardcover edition. Weapon X is one of those stories that's always been collected in some kind of format. And we did an old reader, new reader on it just recently. Uh, if you've never read it, it is the origin of how Wolverine is kidnapped. Before he became Wolverine, he's just Logan and eventually becomes Weapon X when the adamantium is forged into his bones. And this is the story where all that takes place with beautiful artwork by Barry Winsor Smith. Well, now where was I? I was getting to a point. Oh yes, the reason I'm pushing this book is because I told David that there is no way that this book doesn't sell. It, um, because, you know, when they released it over a decade ago, there weren't that many people collecting omnibus editions and now the market seems to have grown we have a lot more new collectors we have old collectors that have missed out on this that came into the scene about five years ago and here's their chance to collect wolverine's earliest and most amazing adventures let's go back to some of this other earlier stuff okay so what is collected in here uh, we have the marvel comics presents like i just showed you all uh, issues one through ten which will be later on that's during the matter poor years and then 72 through 84, which is the Weapon X saga. His first appearance from uh, Incredible Hulk 180 to 182. So I have to mention the fact that he was created by Len Wein and Herb Trimp. So those are the two people that created the character for the pages of Hulk. And eventually he made it into the pages of the Giant Size X-Men. And yes, I, I know that... Herb Trimp and Len Wayne created him, but one thing I do want to note is that his character design of the original costume was created by the amazing John Romita who was drawing and foreseeing everything at the time at Marvel. So he's the one that has created the original costume of Wolverine. And the claws weren't originally attached to him. That was his idea. They were just part of his gloves. But that's another story. We also have Hulk 340, which is the amazing fight 
from Ground Zero with Peter David and Tom McFarlane. Uh, Marvel Treasury Edition 26. Best of Marvel Comics, Wolverine 1 through 4, which is the original miniseries here with Frank Miller and Chris Claremont teaming up to really flesh out this character. Uh, also, we did an old reader, new reader on this last year, but this is the story that pretty much made Wolverine the badass that he is. Really fleshed him out and just the amazing imagery, the story behind it. If you've never read it, this is such a great Wolverine. It, it's the first, I mean, it's the first real Wolverine solo story to kind of make you care about the character and made you think, wait, this guy could actually carry his own monthly title. Uh, continuing with Uncanny X-Men 172 to 173, which are pretty much just the aftermath of what happened in the miniseries. Kitty Pride and Wolverine 1 through 6. Uh, despite of how some people feel about Al Milgram's artwork, I'm a big fan of the story, mainly because of what happens to Kitty Pride and how much she changes throughout it. So that's all six issues are collected in here. Captain America Annual Number 8, one of my favorite covers of all time by Mike Zek. Spider-Man vs. Wolverine, Marvel Age Annual Number 4, Wolverine, the ongoing series, 1 through 10, which is preceded by the Marvel Comics Presents 1 through 10 and Punisher War General 6 through 7 for that awesome Jim Lee artwork. But let's look in here. Uh, here's the Ground Zero issue. The famous fight with the famous cover from 340. Here's the Spider-Man versus Wolverine issue. I love this story too. But let's look really quick. Just some of this Frank Miller artwork again. I just love the way that he drew Wolverine and made him into this samurai. Oh, can't speak highly enough of that miniseries. Sorry, had to go back to find that one picture because I loved it. Here's the ongoing series right here, the John Buscema stuff with writing by Chris Claremont. Also showing issue 10 is a big pivotal point in Wolverine's life because it shows the pretty much the origin of Wolverine and why he hates Sabretooth so much. But if you've never read it, I'm not going to give it away. We're introduced to the characters in Madripoor and Wolverine's alter ego, Patch. That's right. Oh, Mr. Fixit makes an appearance. Of course, that's Hulk, for those of you that uh, have kept up when I was talking about Mr. Fixit in the Peter David Incredible Hulk issue. And let's get to issue 10. This classic issue right here, which is a flashback issue. It's wonderful. It's one of my favorite Wolverine stories. And each one of the Wolverine comics, like uh, I think for like the first 18 or so issues, had a back cover with a Wolverine gallery. So they keep those in the back of the comic. And here is the classic fight with the Punisher, written by Carl Potts, I believe, and drawn by Jim Lee. This is before Jim Lee took over X-Men, and already you were like, oh man, this guy was born to draw Wolverine. So this is the jungle fight. Uh, there we go. These are some classic issues right here. And this is the only way to get this particular story in oversized format. It's been collected in the classics, the Punisher War Journal Volume 1 classics, but they don't have an epic yet. I don't know if they'll get an epic, but it's definitely never been collected in oversized format. Love that splash page. Now let's flip back here to the back for the extras and then do a quick comparison. Okay, so here's the original Wolverine costume design by John Romita and then Gil Kane's original sketch for Giant Size number one. The book has 1,086 pages, by the way, the same page count that the first one had. And here's all the covers, variant covers. This little story here that appears at the end of the trade paperback of Weapon X, but is collected all the way in the back here because it originally appeared in Wolverine 166, I believe. Yes, oh, there it is, Wolverine 166. It's Barry Winsor Smith. It's kind of like a follow-up to his, it's, a, it's four or five pages to his Weapon X story. Here's the cover to a reprint of Incredible Hulk versus Wolverine. That was by John Byrne. This is the introduction from that Incredible Hulk and Wolverine from Peter Sanderson in 1986. The cover, the Wizard Magazine cover, this is the cover to the trade paperback, which I've always liked. And then the covers to the Marvel Premiere hardcovers, Marvel Age, some sketches. This is one of my favorite covers right here, so it's the evolution of a cover. This is from the Captain America Annual that I didn't get to flip through here, but you know, that's a surprise for you all that haven't read it. 
and some more collections back here in the back from the trade paperback and the classics and black book and pages which i think are different from the original so let's take a look and compare both but before we do that let's look at this binding i'm sure you could probably tell that it was sewn binding as i was flipping through here but let's look at that eye so here's what the eye looks like it's a very nice big eye uh, giving you that curve right there that you need for these pages so let's look and compare it to the original printing really quick. Just a few pages. Okay, so let's get these open. Of course, original printing and new printing. As I mentioned, the bookend pages are just black, whereas this has this slick design to it, almost like a countertop look to it, this marble like. And you can tell that this just folds over nicely, whereas this is trying to close up a little bit. And let's get to some pages here. Original printing, new printing, by the way, the original printing has had its share of love. I think I must have read this at least five times, and I know my wife has read it once. So um, it's still trying to close up a little bit. Not much of a rat trap like some of those early DC books, but still. Uh, the new binding, it's perfect. It's laying over nice. Here's another comparison with the cover. And as you can tell, my original binding keeps wanting to close. I don't know how many times that spine has been stretched out. Uh, let's look in the middle. Okay, once again, original printing, new printing. And one thing I forgot to mention is the new printing has a page count of 1,064 pages, which is a little more than the original printing. So you'll notice, for example, Kitty Pride and Wolverine number three starts on page 398, whereas this one starts on page 406. So I haven't done a page by page comparison, but I do know the page count at least. Just flipping a little more through here through the original printing and the new printing, and then we'll look in the back here. Okay, so again, original printing that's trying to close, and the new printing that's laying over really nice. Why would you not get it? It's a penny more and has better binding. <laughs> I think this speaks for itself. The new printing is just laying over nice. Another difference, of course, being the paper quality. The original printing has thicker paper, and that was very common with Omnis back then. That's the kind of paper they used. The newer printing has a little thinner paper. Not that it's bad or anything, because it's great. I think it's awesome because they make our, they also make our Omnis slimmer and nice to put into a shelf and give you more room for more Omnis. At least that's my mentality. Final thought, the book has been reprinted. This long out of print book was going well over 200 plus dollars just last year alone and now it's being reprinted for just one penny over than what it used to cost with better binding i mean if you if you have wanted this book for a long time now's the time to get it let's make that wolverine omnibus volume 2 happen and if you want to purchase it you can purchase it from cheapgraphicnovels.com your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you mentees, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now that was the contents of the book. Where else you can pick up the stories and other formats, the binding of the new edition, the page count, and of course, the comparison to the original one. I think I covered everything. If I did not, please leave those comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and the notifications button to let you know when our videos go live. And I made a promise that if Marvel sent me a review copy, we would be giving it away. And this is going to be part of our big 20,000 subscriber giveaway. So keep an eye out on the channel. We're getting there. So share the videos, let your friends know. That would be so appreciated. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.